what up guys? The real big hole here from PX3. It's my first video here and uh, what a way to go in. We finally, well, not finally, but we topped this YCS again. I got top 32. Unfortunately, when X2 in Swiss, I wanted to do better than that, but here we are. Finished 27th and I immediately lost in top 32 because my opponent just wanted it more than me, apparently. <laughs> That's right. I played um, Pure Snake Eye for this event. I thought it would be slightly better than the Fire King variant, it's just a bit more consistent and I really really didn't want to play above 40 cards. Um, I'm glad I played pure, I didn't miss the Fire King cards at all. And uh, yeah, I'll show you the list. Here we go. Um, so, played three of these, I think, look this is just like the format at this point, I think everybody knows what these cards do. Um, I made, I've made several jokes with people about, if I normal summon this card and it's resolved, I'd laugh at them saying, you're not doing your part of the format because you're supposed to imperm this card, otherwise that's just how it works. Um, played two of these. I really wanted to play one, and a lot of people asked me why I wanted to play one, and my response was I'm not a coward. Um, but unfortunately we did coward out. I think the second one, unfortunately, when you play pure, it just comes up like a lot. Like a lot of the times you can have this as your normal summon, you can summon it, and then get your original to get Ash, and then Ash actually searches this and summons another monster, so it's like three, so you kind of need to have the second one in the deck. Um, not to mention it also helps having multiples when you first shift the decks and get your first one banished. Um, Oak, cards crazy. Two Flamberds. You have to play two in the pure variant. Um, a lot of people are saying you should side out the, like one of these going second. It's just absolutely incorrect. I had never sided a second one out. In testing, I lost like four games to siding out a second one. So I always kept two in the deck and it thoroughly came up. Luckily for me, I never draw two in my opening hand during the event. So like we take those, we take those, you know. So uh, those are the Snake Eye Monsters. Pretty standard at this stage. Um, like three Witch. Uh, I tried every alteration of this card to get it to 1, 2, I just, I don't know. Unfortunately, I think you just have to play 3, especially in this variant, when you only have, like, so many starters. You need to play maximum starters. So, like, 3 Witch is just, yeah, 3 Witch. And then the Jet Synchron for the pure combos. I actually, like, tested without this card for, like, a week. And, like, yeah, I ended up putting it back in because I realized I was just bad. Um, that's all those monsters. Spells is 3 of this card. It's just Rota. Um, I, I, <laughs> I did it for a while. I, like, I, I was told that a lot of people are ashing this card if you activate it first. Um, so anytime I opened Snake Eye Ash and Bonfire, I activated Bonfire first to see if it would just happen. And it never did, unfortunately. But I thought that would be funny if it did. Um, three Wanted. It's the same thing. It's like the, un the only thing about the three witches is a lot of time you open them. Like you can open them in tandem. And like realistically, they're not terrible because you can just pitch one to the other and then they recycle. But... Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it just happens and it's a bit annoying, but you just have to. It's just one of those things you have to do. Um, original and Divine Temple. This card's legal text is like just win games for no reason. It's just absolutely absurd. Like I was summoning cards out of my opponent's spell trap zone. You just summon every. It's just busted. Like I. Oh. But um. Like yeah, I think this is the whole reason why the pure deck has like the edge slightly because you can just use and abuse this card. Um, this card sucks. <laughs> I, I had this hit off the top of my deck with two Rise Hearts against Cash. It's just utter, utter crap. Um, one for one, I didn't activate this card ever, but it's more starters, so you probably just have to play it. I sided it out when I go second, but the one time I did draw it, I discarded it for the Jet Synchron I already had, so it is what it is. Um, I think there's not much to say about this card. Everyone in the format is playing like a bunch of hand traps, so you just kind of have to play cross out designators. Um, this card does allow you to do like really cool stuff though. When like if they don't hand trap you for any reason, it just becomes like an interrupt on their turn if they're playing like if they're playing a fire deck, or even if they're playing uh, Kashtir for us. It was really funny, but um, I think I think this card is just fine. Like uh, it, yeah, I don't know. There's not much to say. Everyone's just playing too many hand traps because that's just kind of like the format. For example, I played three Ash Blossom, three Droll and Lockbird, three Nibiru, three Effect Veiler, I played one Mourner, and I played three Imperm. This is 16. Like, and funnily enough, I thought 16 was actually too low a number. Like, a lot of people are playing 17. The one guy in the top cut was playing 19 in his main deck. Like, that's just how the format rolls. But just all of these cards are just really good. A lot of people are in the room, so we play, decided to play Drolls. Um, I was really hoping that I would get drolled a lot, because Droll just does nothing to pure. Um, you just let Droll resolve and just full board them through it, it just doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, this, like, 
like literally one of my losses was just the fact that I only opened Ash, opened Nowhere to Push, and they just had the Imperm for it. So it's like, unfortunately, this is just the state of Yu-Gi-Oh at the moment, but we do what we can. Right. Moving on to the extra deck. Uh, Link Karibo. It's probably the best card in the extra deck. A lot of people don't know that the uh, effect to reduce to zero with this card is not actually once per turn. So like multiple times they'll just leave it on the board, have have like Divine Temple with Oak or something like that, and then go reduce something to zero, and then in open ga open game state and battle phase they go, do you have anything? They go, no, and I summon the Link Reaver back, and they go, is it? It's once, isn't it? So it's just not once at all. So like you can just catch people who don't know, like read their cards doing stuff like that. Um, there's not much to say about those two. They're just very very good. Dark and Heater. A dark to dark magician today. That was pretty fun. Uh, versus a uh, versus a branded deck who was playing. I assume Dragoon package. But yeah, I just took his Dark Magician with it because I thought it'd be hilarious. And it turns out it was. Um, Phoenix, Promethean, whoever wrote this card should just be fired, I think. It just, I don't know what happened there. Um, I never summoned this card. I think it's required though. But uh, yeah, I, it never came up. Uh, busted. OTK for literally no reason. I got OTK through five monsters because of these two cards. I don't understand. Yeah, I, I don't understand how we got to this stage. But it's just like really broken. Uh, the three synchro monsters. If you resolve full synchro board, you lose. Like, you, like your opponent just loses the game, just on the spot. It's just really strange. Um, yeah, so. Uh, I never I never made this with Witch in a hand trap. I, to be honest, I, I thought a lot of people just wouldn't read Witch. So I just like to leave Witch on the board. And then I can summon it back on their turn to reset a card. And that happened to me twice. I did that, I did that twice. So rather than like using the hand trap on them. I'll just leave the witch up and just sort of just play witch control because if they out it, I get follow up. If they don't, I have a twenty-five beat stick that you just can't get through. So there's no, there's almost no downside. Uh, I did play the Typhon. Now there were a few people in my group who played like multiple different versions. Like if it, somebody played Anima, a couple people I knew played Underworld Goddess. I think like these fourteen are stock standard, but this could be like one of like five cards. Like like I said, the Anima, Underworld Goddess, um, the Axis Code Talker. I think this is the best one because it comes up in. If you get into hand trap wars with people, and like you hand trap them twice, and they make like Link Kribo into Little Knight, um, you can just like normal a hand trap if you have like six hand traps in your hand and just make this card and just fully control the game from that stage. So I thought it would come up. I never summoned it. But I was too busy beating people. <laughs> um, a lot of people would beat you. Yeah, well, we don't need to talk about that, all right? Um, the best card in the side deck, three copies of Fenrir. Um, we learned very quickly that you sort of just concede summon limit in this deck if you go second. So, like, my whole goal in this was just to never lose to summon limit. So we sort of, like, decided that it wasn't just gonna, it just wasn't gonna happen. We put this card in the side deck, and I got summon limited five times today, and I won every time I got summon limited. You just summon Fenrir and play Fenrir control. And it also, like, works against, like, all your shifter decks... Because you can just, like, if you, I got, one of my games I got shifted, I literally just went, summon Fenrir, search second Fenrir, set impen past turn, and, like, it just doesn't matter after that stage, you just can't do anything to me. Because there's no, there's no scenario where you kill me through the Fenrir, and then because you don't kill me, shift is over, and then I kill you. That's just how that works. I also put this in in the mirror, because it, it hard answers the witch. So, like, if you go first, you can summon it going first, full board next to it. Like, the, the normal Ash line is Appalooza. It's like, it's like Appalooza plus Flamberge IP. So if you make the Appalooza and they drop the Wish into it, like, normally if you don't have Fenrir, you just have to sort of, like, either negate it and accept that they might attack your Witch, which means you have to, like, Little Knight it or do something really weird. If you have this on the board and you have Appalooza for three, you just let the Witch hit the board and resolve. They set the original and then you banish it with the Fenrir. And they have to commit another card to the board before they can flip the original. In which case, both the normal summon and the card that get off the original lose to the Appalooza. So you just get... Like, that board plus Fenrir, there's no cracking it. It's just too broken. Um, also, I cross-outed two Fenrirs against Kashtira players. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how good this is. Um, two more copies of Moonlit. You just need more hand traps. I don't know. It's weird. This is, it's called, I, I actually liked having three. I, I probably would have played three, actually. I realized this afterwards. But if you verse... Like, like the Viking variant. You can actually draw this as like a six card and have it as like applicable hand trap when you try to push into them. 
Because they go, like, summon Garunix from Graveyard on your turn, and then try to Kirin pop you, or revive their Avada or something. And you can hit this on the Garunix when they summon it. It negates it, and then when you try to kill them, when that Garunix leaves the field, they take 27. So, this card's actually just really good. But, like I said before, you just kind of need hand traps to, like, play the game, so this year. Um, same thing. Two Vestials. Uh, I versed Zero Voiceless. So, hard to say how good this card was. Like, I versed one Tier Limit player, and... This was really, really good. Um, uh, this was good against the branded player as well. But yeah, no voiceless decks. And if I if I know after game one my opponent was playing pure, I'd also put them in because you can hit the link river or the IP when they combo. Um, but I don't. It, it never came up in those matchups. But yeah, I think they're still good cards. Uh, Lullaby of Obedience. Um, I don't know how to feel about this card actually. I put it in. In almost every mirror when I went first, but I never drew it. The only time I drew it was I drew two going second against Kashtira. Because when you when you verse Kashtira, if you play Fenrir in your deck, even if you don't, you put this in, you call their Fenrir, they give it to you, and then you summon it, and then you can search your Fenrir if you play it. Um, even if you don't, like taking their Fenrir and you play Fenrir control against them, it's just like really, really good. But um, the only time I drew it was I drew two against my round 10 Kashtira opponent, and he anti-spelled me, so it, it was what it was. I still think this card's kind of good. I'm not sure it's good enough to put in the deck going second. Um, I just wasn't doing that. Um, but yeah, I guess it helps push through Bayless. You probably just have to play it. Uh, two of these. I never drew them, so it was kind of irrelevant. I Look, this is Australia YCS. You just sort of have to be prepped for Rogue. So like, if you verse Rogue, you have all of these to put in. Um, I was also putting this in against Fire King. If I saw they were like sacking Sanctuary off or just not playing it, you hit Spell Trap against them with this and it nukes the whole board. So... But it never happened again. And then some limits. It's just what you have to do. I think I summon limited two people. Both times are resolved. Because I think a lot of people just conceded the fact that they would lose the game to this card. Fortunately, we didn't. But, yeah. A lot of people just did. Alright. That's my deck. Um, it's a very good tournament. Uh, I think we all had a lot of fun. I think we always do at these events. Um, Shoutouts. Shoutouts PX3, obviously. Best team. Best team in Perth. Perth. Out here putting the dub in WA. That's the plan. Uh, big shout outs to Leon, who gave me all these bloody cards. The man's a crazy man. Um, but he helps me out before every event, because I just don't own things. Um, but yeah, shout out to all the per people in Perth. That's it.